What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well today. As you guys can tell by today's video title, today's video is all about makeup techniques slash hacks that I've learned from TikTok that have just completely changed my makeup game. Obviously on this channel we try out makeup techniques and makeup hacks all the time and I've literally tried my fair share of most of them. There has been some hits, there has been some fails. If you've seen any of my series where I try out makeup hacks from TikTok, you probably already know this. But this video should be refreshing because this is all about the ones that actually work and I feel like there's not that many of them lately. Your girl has tested so many different makeup hacks to find the gems, the diamonds in the rough. So I'm here to basically put you guys onto some of these makeup techniques and makeup hacks that actually work for me and hopefully they'll work for you. If you guys are new here and you guys haven't seen my face before, hi I'm Roxy, welcome to my channel. If you guys want to stick around, be sure to subscribe down below. But if you guys want to learn some new makeup techniques that actually work then without further ado let's get into it all right guys so the very first makeup technique that i have learned from tiktok which has completely changed my life is for your base this is one that has just completely gone viral quite recently on tiktok and it's a technique done by the celebrity makeup artist mary phillips she works with people such as kendall jenner and hailey bieber and honestly their base makeup always looks absolutely flawless so i'm about to put you onto something here if you haven't heard of this technique already basically what she does is she uses very minimal products on the skin and in turn it just looks so much more flawless and less cakey before she does anything she will go in with a cream contour and she will just apply that wherever you want to contour naturally so for this i'm going to be using the maybelline age rewind in a darker shade i usually use this to contour with so first up i'm just going to apply a little bit of this product just underneath my cheekbones my temples and forehead and also a little bit on my jawline just here i'm just gonna blend this out so that it's nice and smooth and just melted into the skin. Doing this first essentially lays down that base of contour underneath everything so that when you put things on top it's just gonna look so seamless and so natural. I do have to say it's a very strange order of doing your makeup because obviously we're so used to applying foundation then concealer then bronzer so switching it up on its head like this is really interesting but for some reason it really just does work so well. Okay I do realize that this concealer that I'm using is very very warm but don't worry we are gonna kind of tone this down so next up she takes a concealer and she basically just applies this wherever you need that extra bit of coverage so I'm just gonna kind of go over these parts here where I've got some blemishes maybe on my chin around my nose I also like to put some in my temples because I've got quite a thin skin right there so all my veins really show and then a little bit on the forehead I'm just gonna use a small fluffy kind of brush to blend this out. You don't have to be too precise with the blending at this stage because we are gonna obviously apply foundation over the top and that will kind of blend everything seamlessly. Okay, so I am looking kind of cray cray right now, but this is the step that literally pulls it all together. The foundation, the one that I'm using is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Foundation. I've just got the small version of this, but basically I'm just gonna pour a little bit of that onto the back of my hand. You really don't need a lot at this stage. And then what you do is you take one of these massive kind of like powder brushes. I normally use these to literally set my face with or to apply a blusher. So honestly, when it came to this step, I was very skeptical. But basically what you do is you just pick up a little bit of that foundation off of the back of your hand. And then you pretty much just like blend everything out together with a really light hand. It kind of just creates like this sheer cast of foundation over your skin. It means that the layer is so thin that it's not gonna go crusty and it's not gonna go into your fine lines throughout the day. I find that as I age, I suddenly start noticing all these little fine lines on my forehead, on my small lines, and that is really not something I wanna be accentuating. So using this technique really avoids that because we're not having that cakey layer of foundation just sitting there doing nothing. And look at that, the contour has blended out so seamlessly. It looks so glowy. I'm honestly obsessed with doing my base this way. I can definitely see why so many celebrities are rocking this technique. So definitely give it a go. All right, now moving on to the next makeup tip that has changed my life literally for the better is one for spot concealing. This technique is literally in the name spot concealing because you're literally concealing on the spot. I remember I learned this technique on a shoot from again a celebrity makeup artist. I think her name was Louise Constad. She works with Helena Bonham Carter a lot and she actually did my makeup for a shoot for a L'Oreal hair commercial back in the day. I remember I turned 
turned up to shoot with the biggest spot of my life. It was literally like a volcano waiting to erupt. And she didn't do what I thought she would do, which is obviously what I normally do, and that's just slather a bunch of concealer on and blend it out and hope for the best. She literally just took some concealer and she took the tiniest little brush like this and basically she just concealed on the spot. And I just think that's so genius because a lot of the time we think that more is more, but it really isn't. Less is definitely more when it comes to spots because you don't wanna layer so much product over it that it becomes crusty and just really obvious. I'm gonna show you guys an example on some blemishes that I have here which the foundation hasn't quite covered. So literally I would just blend right over the spot like this. Tiniest little dot, you can't even see it basically. I will then do the same on any other little imperfections that I've got on my face. Once you have that concealer on your skin, don't blend it out straight away. Let it kind of marinate on your skin for about three minutes or so because that will really change the opacity of the concealer. It will make it way more full coverage. By the way, this technique I have also seen on TikTok in the recent years, but that's just where I learned it originally. It was from a makeup artist. Once you've let it sit on your skin for long enough, you can take a little like dome blending kind of brush that's quite compact and what you want to do is literally just press it into the spot don't move it around literally just press it and that will naturally just blend away the edges and it will just make it look so so natural it will make it look like it's part of your skin if you need more coverage and this first layer isn't enough to cover the redness of your spot or whatever you're trying to hide basically what you do is you then apply a layer of powder over the top and then you can go in again with another layer of concealer Honestly though, this technique has been a lifesaver for me throughout the years whenever I get a spot and I just want it gone. And look at that, it's gotten rid of the spot so well and honestly it doesn't feel cakey, it doesn't look crusty, it just looks like my skin. Now makeup tip number three, this one I have also learned from TikTok of course. I can't remember what user I learned this from so if you guys know, definitely comment them down below. But basically, you might have noticed that I've not applied any under eye concealer yet. There is a reason for that. I didn't want to use the concealer that I used for my face. I'm actually going to be using the P. Louise eye base. Most people would think to just use this on their eyelids for eyeshadow as an eye base, but basically the nature of this product is that it makes things not crease. So if this works for your eyelid, why would it not work for your under eye as well? I have been using this technique every single time I do my makeup these days and I feel like my under eye just looks so much less creased. So I'll literally take the tiniest amount of the P. Louise base. By the way, the one that I use is in the shade Ruma 02. I'm going to take it on the same dome brush that I used to conceal with and I'm literally just gonna pick up some of that product and then kind of like dab it over any area that I need concealing. Now this is another tip in its own right but if you really struggle with under eye creasing try not to apply your concealer right under your lash line. These days my eyes have been creasing so much again as I age I feel like I'm getting those fine lines right under there so I'm trying to avoid applying my concealer there at all. As you can see I'm kind of trying to really apply it below my eye more than anything and then once I have that product a little bit more sheared out I'll take whatever's on my brush and then I'll kind of go up into my lash line area but you really want to apply as little product under there as possible if you struggle with creasing because obviously the less product the less chances of it creasing I mean look at the difference already I used such minimal product and I just was really strategic with how I placed it now the next tip is for blusher if you struggle with your blush face throughout the day this one is for you this one's actually a pretty simple tip that I feel like maybe a lot of people already know but it's one that really works for me and I've learned it from TikTok what you want to do first before applying your powder blush is actually apply a cream blush underneath I'm just using this one from Fenty Beauty this is in the shade tripping and I'm just literally going to apply that where I want my blush. This one's a little bit more of like a highlighter kind of blush, but it will still work for the purpose of this demonstration. I will then kind of pat it away. You don't want to be dragging because that will disturb the makeup underneath. You really want to pat that into the skin to blend it out. I'm just going to do that on both sides. And then you want to go in with your powder blush. So I'm using my Roxx Revolution Blush Burst Palette. These are sadly not available anymore, but I still love mine. To be honest, I think they might still be available in some countries, but I know they're not on the Revolution site anymore, which makes me so sad. So I've just picked that up onto a big fluffy brush and I'm just gonna kind of pat that over where I've placed 
that cream product. As you can see now, we have like a really nice transition going on because it's going very pigmented where I'm applying the powder, but then the edges are really nice and diffused where it's cream underneath. So this is definitely a technique that I literally swear by and it makes my blush last so much longer. Moving on to the next makeup tip that I've actually learned again from TikTok quite recently. It's one from the makeup artist Makeup by Ariel. Is it Makeup by Ariel or Makeup by Ariel? I think it's Ariel. Anyways, obviously we know Makeup by Ariel. He is the makeup artist of Kylie Jenner, which I mean, he's just amazing. So he recently spilled some beans over on his stories on Instagram and he actually shared a technique that he uses on all his celebrity clients. As part of his technique, he basically said that he puts such little product under the eye to avoid creasing that he doesn't do any color correcting underneath the kind of like concealer or foundation. What he does instead is he will take a peach toned eyeshadow that's really light in color and he will dust it on the under eye as like the finishing touch over powder. Honestly, I think that's absolutely genius because sometimes the color correctors that you put under your base can be really heavy and really thick. So first up, I'm just gonna take my Vanilla Co Powder Puff. This is actually a Korean brand that I featured in my Testing Korean makeup video. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. But this has quickly become one of my favorite powders. I've been using it every single time I do my makeup. So I'm just gonna dust that under my eyes to set it. By the way, I'm only setting my under eye for good measure because I honestly don't feel like I really need to. My under eye has increased like at all. I mean, let me give you guys a close up. Look at that under eye. Like there is no creasing. There is no caking under there. And I literally blame it down to the P. Louise. It really does work. If you haven't tried that technique, you must. It is a life changer. But back to the powdering. I'm just gonna powder for good measure to really give his technique a really good run. So now that I've powdered, what I'm gonna do so now that I've powdered, what I usually do is I take this palette right here. Obviously you can use any palette you've got laying around. This is the Doja Cat X BH Cosmetics palette, which I've just got laying around. I'm gonna take the shade Divine, which is literally the perfect peachy kind of bright shade that he's talking about. And literally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap that right over the dark areas of my eye. What this is gonna do is it's gonna correct any kind of ashiness under your eye that your concealer might have caused. Sometimes when we use a concealer that's too too bright for our skin, you kind of get that ashy sort of cast under eye, but this literally just balances that out. So that is how my under eye is looking. I honestly have to say, I really like this technique and you guys definitely need to try it out if you haven't already. Okay, moving on to the brows. My biggest brow tip that I've literally been sharing with everybody I know is using a felt tip liner for your eyes in a color brown or one that matches your eyebrows instead of using like an actual brow one because I find that the brow ones are just nowhere near as pigmented. As you can see, my brows are kind of dark. They're like a cool toned, ashy brown kind of shade. You don't want it to be too orange, that's for sure. The one that I've really been loving using for this is the one from Lily by Red, which is another Korean brand. But basically what I do is I only fill in areas of my eyebrows that I feel like just need a little bit of help. I don't fill the whole thing. Now, because a felt liner, the formula of it is very liquidy. It's just so easy to create that really natural stroke that looks like an eyebrow hair. I find that I can never get the same kind of result with like a pomade or a crayon. It always just looks a little bit too smudged. This is an eyeliner that's waterproof. So it will literally last on your brows all day long and you don't have to worry about it. So what I do is I literally just go into my brows and I kind of try to imitate the direction of my hairs and I do it by just creating really thin lines that are not like connected together. I will pretty much do a little stroke of an eyebrow and then I'll move on like a tiny little bit and I'll do another one, but I'll leave a space in between the strokes. This really just imitates of how your eyebrows actually look naturally. Doing this technique will really make your eyebrows look so much fuller and so much more natural like you're not wearing any makeup. Once the product is on, I'll then kind of just fluff through them to kind of diffuse the lines and make them less harsh. I once saw a TikTok, which again, I cannot remember who this was by. What they said to do is instead of doing the full shebang of nose contouring with the two lines going down the middle, 
just do the contouring around the tip of the nose. This will give you a much more natural look to your nose contour and it will look like you've got that really nice button nose. So first things first, I'm using my Roxy X Revolution Contour and Highlighter Palette. It's well loved. I am gonna be using this shade right here, which is like the perfect nose contour shade. You wanna be using a big fluffy eyeshadow brush like this and hold it right at the tip so that you're not applying too much pressure. What I like to do first is I will go under the nose and give it that really nice lifted kind of shape. And now instead of going on the sides and all around and everything, what I do is I literally just place a little bit on the tip of my nose, if that makes sense. Look at that already. That looks so natural. Obviously we have to blend this out and diffuse it, but I just love the shape that this gives my nose. It just makes my nose look so cute and like a little button. I'm then going back into my translucent powder and I'm gonna pick up some of this on the same brush and help diffuse this whole thing. I'm just going kind of like around the tip over the top, just really trying to blend it all together. The key is that you don't want any harsh lines because obviously that will make the nose contour look really obvious. I will then take a tiny little brush like this and I'm gonna take this highlighter shade and literally just dab this in the very center of the tip of my nose very, very lightly. You can also apply some down the center of your nose. This will create that illusion of a slender nose without having to do those really obvious contour lines down the sides. And that is honestly all I do for my nose contour. I feel like for my face and my nose, this looks so much better than doing the whole like really obvious lines down the sides. I have also tried the reverse nose contour hack and honestly, it wasn't really for me. This is the best one for my nose shape. By the way, I do realize that nose contour is very personal for everybody's noses and face shapes. So if that technique of doing the lines down the sides works for you then carry on doing it but personally for me I feel like this works better all right moving on to the next makeup technique that has really changed my life and the way that I do my eyeliner this one is perfect for anyone that's got hooded eyes or slightly hooded eyes or anywhere on the spectrum I feel like I have slightly hooded eyes and obviously with age I can already tell it's gonna get worse and worse what a hooded eye is is basically where this part of your skin kind of droops down like this over where your eyeliner should be be. Now, obviously, if your skin is in the way, it kind of makes your eyeliner application a little bit difficult to get that really crisp straight line. So my biggest tip to you is keep it small and keep it straight. Don't be doing any of this sort of like angle, which obviously we all love. We want that lift to our eyes. We all do. But some of us just cannot have that. And I'm right there with you guys. Because I'm starting to have that slight hood, I try to keep my eyeliner as level as possible with my eye. Also, I I like to keep it really, really short. So you don't wanna be creating a really long line that's just gonna get in the flap of your skin on your eye and it's just gonna ruin everything. Keep it sweet and short. That is my best advice for hooded eyes. And also I would recommend trying to use a brown eyeliner instead of a black one. This is obviously just personal preference, but I've been loving a brown eyeliner lately. It just looks so much more seamless and so much more like natural and less jarring. I just feel like it gives that really clean, natural look, even though you're still wearing eyeliner. Now moving on to the next tip. This one is again from another celebrity makeup artist on TikTok. Her name is Melissa Murdick. She recently did a TikTok where she spoke about the highlighter that's literally like a line on your cheekbone. And let me tell you, we've all been guilty of doing that. Me probably more than others, because back in the day, I used to literally slather my face in highlighter and I thought it looked really good. Again, what we've learned from this whole video is that less is definitely more. So the technique that I learned from her is to highlight your face in a slightly more understated way and she called it the halo eye. For this technique, I'm gonna be using this gorgeous highlighter from Charlotte Tilbury. This is the shade Pillow Talk Glow. It's got this really gorgeous pinky sheen to it, which I love. I'm gonna be applying this with the powder and sculpt brush from Charlotte Tilbury as well. I'm just picking some of that up on the brush. And then what she says to do is literally just apply it in the points around the eye that the natural sunlight would hit. So obviously we wanna apply a little bit onto the cheekbone right here, not too much. She also applied a little bit right here in the middle of the brow and then also the temple. 
She then takes it and applies it right in the inner corner here. As you can see now, my light is hitting all the major points of my face that protrude out. I don't have this really harsh streak of highlighter down my cheekbone and it just looks so much more natural. I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side now. So that is how that highlighter looks. My face just looks so glowy but without looking too much and overdone. So I'm really loving this technique. And now moving on to makeup tip number 10 that I learned from TikTok. For this one, I'm gonna quickly line my lips first. I'm using the Peaches and Cream Lip Liner in the shade Punchline and as you can see, I've been loving this one. It's literally like the perfect shade of lip liner to overline with. Now the lip tip that I have to share with you guys that I learned from TikTok is to apply a lip tint underneath your lipstick. Basically, every lipstick obviously fades throughout the day, especially if it's like a cream one. So applying a lip tint first will mean that when your lipstick fades away, you'll still have something underneath so you don't have to reapply as much. Obviously, if the lip tint and the lipstick matches in color, that's even better, but it's not necessary. So first up, I'm gonna apply the lip tint onto my lip. Ooh, this is so nice. Once my lip tint is on, I can then apply my lipstick. I'm gonna be taking the shade Toko from my Roxy X Revolution lip collection. And this is like a gorgeous matte pink lipstick. So I'm just gonna apply that all over. And now I know that when my lipstick fades at some point throughout the day, I will always have some kind of color underneath there. All right guys, so that is everything for this makeup look and all the techniques that I've really been loving lately. Let me know if you guys have tried any of these or whether you're planning on trying any of them. I honestly feel like ever since incorporating all these various techniques into my routine, my makeup has just looked so much better and so much more flawless. So I really hope that I have put you onto something here and that you're gonna try them out and improve your makeup routine because I feel like these have changed my life. If you guys did enjoy this video and you wanna see more like this in the future, definitely smash that huge thumbs up down below and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But I guess that is all for this video. So I hope you guys are well and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mwah.